So let us dive into one of the most fundamental and versatile data structures in Python, and that is the list. Very, very simply, it allows you to use one variable to store multiple items. And something very important is that you can use different data types within that list. So you can use numbers, strings, booleans. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's make a list of dream cities that we wish to visit in 2024. So we'll call it dream list, and then we'll set that variable equal to, we're going to use the square brackets. And in the square brackets, if you're working with string literals, you're going to have to use quotation marks, single quotes or double quotes work just fine. So let's put some cities in. Let's do Rome, Valencia, Sydney, and Las Vegas. Please keep in mind, that there's a comma separating everything in your list within the square brackets. This is extremely important. And remember how I said you can also have numbers? So we can have something like 235. We can also use Boolean values. So we can say true and we could say false. Now I can summon the print function and then I could simply put in the variable dream list instead of listing all these things and telling it to print. And then if I run the program, you will see that over here, it went ahead and it basically just listed everything that we had in that list. So for the sake of this example, I'm going to remove the Boolean and integer values, and we're just going to leave it as cities. And now I want to show you how to access items in the list. So let's say we want to check the first item on the list. In Python, we start counting from zero, not one. So remember, Rome, Valencia, Sydney, Las Vegas, it's not one, two, three, four. It's zero, one, two, three. We covered this when we covered indexing. So in order to access an item in a list at index zero in Python, we'll have to use the square brackets notation with the index number. Again, please remember that in Python, it starts with zero as the index. So here's how we would do it. We can simply just summon the print function and in parentheses, we can bring up the dream list variable and then in square brackets, we can put it at index zero and it will go ahead and it should print Rome. Let's see if I'm correct. So if I go ahead and I run the program, you'll see that in fact, it did print Rome. Now, I want you to get used to reading certain code in Python. And typically, it's not done this way. The way it's usually done is you will see the zero index as a variable. So it would be something like first underscore item equals dream list square brackets zero close the parentheses and then you will summon the print function and you'll simply print the variable first item and if we go ahead clear this and then we run the program again you'll see that it says rome now instead of assigning a variable to each and every one of these items which can take a long time you can actually do something referred to as unpacking. So you can actually assign elements of a list to multiple variables. And what you can do there is you can simply write a few variables. So we'll say first city, then we'll separate it by a comma, say second underscore city, separated by a comma, third underscore city, separated by a comma, and fourth underscore city, and then set that equal to dream list. What that's gonna do is it's gonna assign each and every one of these variables in the same order as what's in the list. So now if we summon the print function and we wanna print the second city, we simply just start typing out second city. We select that variable, we click print, and you'll see that it effectively printed Valencia. Now, what if you just wanted to print the second, third, and fourth city, and you wanted to ignore the first? Well, we can achieve that with slicing. The way that's done is we can summon the print function, and then we could call upon the list, so dream list, and then in square brackets, we can figure out which one is Valencia, which is at index one, and then we can use the colon, which means one colon, and if we leave a blank, It'll basically print everything after 
the index that's specified in the beginning. So if we go ahead and print this, you'll see that it printed Valencia, Sydney, and Las Vegas. Now let's say we only wanted to print Valencia and Sydney. So we're only interested in the second and third city. One way that we could achieve this is we can put one colon three. Now why are we putting three? That's supposed to be Las Vegas. Well, it's because in slicing, it will print everything from the index on the left of the colon all the way up to the right minus one. So think of it as a printing to first and two, and it's stopping at three. So it stops at Las Vegas. Now, in this example, it's silly because we could just say print and then second city, third city. But if there were like 90 items in this list, this would make a lot of sense for why you would use slicing. And now let's say we wanted to print just the first three and we didn't want to print the rest. Imagine there's 90 items in this list. One way we could achieve that is just leave the left hand side blank of the colon and then just specify where to stop. So if it's just the first three, we know that Sydney is at index two. And so we're doing everything up to three, but not including three. So now it should print Rome, Valencia, Sydney. So if I run the program, let's see what we get. Boom, and now you see Rome, Valencia, Sydney. Now for the sake of this example, I put in a couple of more members of the list. And you'll see that these elements of the list, there might be hundreds or thousands of them. So let's say you want to have variables for only the first two items in this list. We can achieve that. We can achieve that by writing city underscore a comma space city underscore b comma space. And then if you use the asterisk, you can go ahead and write anything you want after it. So for instance, we can write underscore cities and then we'll set that equal to the list dream list. So now watch this. If we go ahead and we summon the print function and we instruct it to print other cities, take a look at what happens. If we run the program, you'll see that it went ahead and it printed everything after the first two, because what it did is it took the rest of the list and it made the rest of the list, the variable other underscore cities. So now let's say we wanted to add to this list. We heard that a friend of ours went to Greece. They absolutely loved it. So we want to add Greece to the list. How do we do it? Well, there's a lot of methods that you can use with your list. So let me show you exactly what I mean. We can type in dream list. And then if we hit the dot, we'll see all of these methods that we could choose from on the list. So if we use the append right here, if we type in Greece, what this is going to do is it's going to add Greece to the end of the list. So check this out. If I go ahead and I print dream list, you will see that now it prints it, including Greece at the end. So this is how you append the list. Now, what if the order was important to us and we didn't want Greece to be the last? What if we didn't want it to be a position number five or index four? What if we instead wanted Greece to go right after Rome? So right here at index one. So the second thing in the list, which is index one, how would we achieve that? Well, again, we can just type in dream list. And then if we press the period button or the dot on your keyboard, you will see that again, it opens up all these methods that we can use on the list function. So here we can type insert and with insert, we can specify which index we would want to add Greece to. So we're going to say one, and then we're actually in quotation marks going to type out Greece. And look at how helpful PyCharm is. It's actually helping us. It's showing right here, index dot dot one, and then it's showing object colon, and then we can type in Greece. So if I once again summon the print function and instruct it to print the dream list of cities, you'll see that if I run it, we now see that it says Rome, Greece, Valencia, Sydney, Las Vegas. So now we are starting to successfully manipulate these lists. Now let's say I just visited Sydney. It was amazing and I'm ready to cross it off my bucket list for 2024. So if I want to remove it, there's also a method for removing. So you would simply punch in the variable dream list again. 
hit the dot and then you'll see that over here you can scroll down and find remove and now we could just type in remove Sydney and if I go ahead and I run this program you'll see that we only see three cities now Rome Valencia and Las Vegas now this part is very important remember that over here Rome was indexed at zero Valencia at one Sydney at two Las Vegas at three but we removed Sydney so is Las Vegas still going to be 3? Or is it now going to be 2? Let's check it out. So let's go ahead and print the dream list at index 2. So before I run it, what do you think it's going to be? Do you think it's still going to say Sydney? Or is it going to say Las Vegas? Let's go ahead and see. If I run the program, you'll see that it's now Las Vegas. So why did that happen? Because the Python code runs from up to down right so with every line of code things are changed so this was our list but then when sydney was removed from the dream list las vegas now became the third city which is indexed at position two so now if we go ahead and run it you see that it says rome valencia las vegas and which item is at index two it is las vegas and here in line two, you could see why it was helpful to unpack the list. Because if I want to print something such as, congratulations on crossing this city off your list, I can still go ahead and bring out Sydney by using city underscore three as the variable. Because over here, we unpacked it into four variables. And so to show you, if I go ahead and print that, it says, congratulations on crossing this city off your list, colon, and then I finish the string, and then comma, a space, and I reference city three right here. Now, this is helpful because if I go and print the list after removing Sydney, we can't even see Sydney anymore. But in the list, it was unpacked into the variable city underscore three. And now, if I say congratulations on crossing the city off your list, comma, space, city, underscore, three, and I go ahead and I print it, you'll see that it successfully says congratulations on crossing this city off your list, and then colon, space, Sydney. So python.org has a really helpful resource here, which has a lot of the methods, and it explains exactly what they do. I would highly recommend that you guys go through this list and memorize it. I will link it in the description. I know some of this feels intimidating, but as you play around with it and you start to understand it, you'll feel like you conquered one more topic in Python. Now, if you're curious what type of programs use lists, some simple and relatable examples would be inventory systems, right? So imagine a program that manages the stock of a grocery store. Lists can be used to store the names of items, their quantities, prices, and even expiration dates. Customer records, quiz applications, like a lot of educational tools use lists, classroom management software, in the entertainment media space, so music or video streaming services, the lists can manage the collections of songs, movies, or TV shows, including attributes like genre, length, and artist. In gaming development, lists can track player scores, right? When you see like high scores and stuff, inventory items, or levels in the game. As far as web development, the space that's near and dear to my heart, lists can manage elements like blog posts, comments, or user profiles on a website. In e-commerce platforms, they can actually help track products, customer reviews, and shopping cart items, and so on and so forth. Lists in Python are used in almost any type of program where you need to store and manipulate a collection of items. They are fundamental to organizing and processing data in a structured and efficient manner. So with that being said, I hope you guys appreciated this introductory lesson on lists in Python. Please let me know in the comment section which topic you wish for me to cover next, and I will see all of you in the next video.